Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, back with another Market Watch episode. We are at the point where the format is starting to come together, where people know what the best decks are, and because of that, we are also seeing people looking for cool new text to use, either something that's unexpected in the player's own deck, or something that's an unexpected counter to one of the format's other meta decks. With the Trap Trick Structure Deck adding another control deck to the mix, there are a wide variety of things that you have to be prepared for this format, and so naturally there are a lot of different options that people are considering, causing a ton of different buyouts and price spikes all over the market. Let's get started. To kick things off, let's take a look at Parallel Exceed. So this is a level 8 Cybers monster, but the only way you're ever really summoning this is through its effect. Effectively, if you Link Summon and a Link Arrow opens up a zone, you can Special Summon this card from your hand to that zone, and then Special Summon another copy of Parallel Exceed from your deck, and then both of them become a level 4. This card basically gives you access to a free rank 4 monster, which is really good for certain strategies. It used to be very powerful in Salamangre, where they would make a free rank 4 after summoning into the zone opened up by Bailinx. Now, however, after quite a long period of not seeing any play, the card is being used in Trap Tricks and Therions. In Trap Tricks, it's pretty simple. You summon this card when you make Sarah and then go into one of their rank 4s. With Therions, I'm not too familiar with the different variants, but I believe that they use this card to make Merrymaker and then go into Sargus, and from there they can search any Therion card that they want. I remember before this card came out, everyone thought that it would be a secret rare, but it was just a common in Eternity code, and then it got a couple of different rarity bumps, so the card has always been relatively cheap. Now though, this card is up by a considerable amount. The secret rares are $7 to $8, while the super rares are about 5 The really crazy thing here to me is that the commons are now $3 each, which just feels so insane because I remember these being like $0.25 cents before, and even then, no one would like pay up for them. Then again, even the secret rares used to only be a dollar before, so definitely make note of this card the next time that you're digging through your bulk, because now is a great time to offload these. The next card we're looking at is Neospatian Aqua Dolphin, and man, it has been a while since we last saw this card. I think the last time that this card saw play was back when Infernobles were a top tier deck with Smoke Grenade of the Thief, and you would use Aqua Dolphin off of the connector to rip a card from your opponent's hand before performing your combo. Well now, actually, it's kind of the same thing, except this time we are not going into a sold and we are not playing connector. Instead, this card was used by John Wilkin, a player on the team that took second place at YCS Las Vegas. This card was used alongside Aquaneos and Fusion Deployment to summon it out of the deck to rip a card from your opponent's hand, which is really cool since his branded Despia list actually already main deck Fusion Deployment anyways. I think the idea is that you need branded Fusion to resolve, right? So it's really important that you get rid of your opponent's Ash. Fortunately, Aqua Dolphin does have several lower rarity printings, so you can grab a common still for under a dollar if you just want to try out the tech. However, it's the card's two holo printings that are higher in terms of price. The ultimate rares are obviously ridiculous at $120 each for a near mint copy. I don't think very many of us are looking to buy those realistically. However, even the ultra rares from Battles of Legend are now up to $7 each, with relatively few quantities available. This card is just a one of side deck card for now, or at least that's all that was run in the deck list that I saw, so maybe now is a good time to offload your extra copies of this card. Keep this in mind, and keep some commons in your trade binder just in case someone is looking for them at your locals, and you can get a bit of value out of them. Up next, Crossout Designator is a card that is starting to get talked about once again. We all know that this card was kind of a huge flop right at the beginning. Despite being really good and seeing a ton of play over in the OCG, this card never really saw too much usage here in the TCG. The two games are obviously different, but it was still surprising to see such a generic card that looked so good end up barely being used here. But now players are looking at Crossout Designator as a tech in the current format. Crossout Designator is unique in that it can negate, theoretically, any card in the game, and this includes things like Nibiru and Dimensional Barrier, which would otherwise be extremely difficult to stop. Specifically, Kash Tira is hit hard by those two cards, and Crossout Designator is one of the few ways that you can get around them, 
assuming that you're okay with running a copy of each of them in your own main deck as well. I personally haven't looked into the format too much yet, but it would be really cool to see Crossout Designator finally get some meta play, and it'll be interesting to see how different decks react or put in different tech cards in order to specifically play through or around this card. The card is starting to catch some people's attention, but it's only up a little bit in terms of price with each the Ultra and Secret Rare coming in right at that $9 to $10 range. If you don't already have a set, I'd pick up a playset for your own use just in case while the card is still relatively cheap, because if the card starts to pick up in popularity, I could easily see it hitting the $15 to $20 mark. Next up, Contact C is a tech card that players are looking at using as a side deck tech against the Kash Tira. When your opponent summons a monster, you get to drop this on their side of the field, and then in order for them to go into the extra deck, they have to use Contact C as a material. However, since this card is a level 6, it becomes really difficult for Kash Tira to do anything with it, and the deck gets kinda stuck. Now, in terms of application, this card is very similar to Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, which also forces your opponent to use it as a material. However, there are some differences that you have to make note of. Contact C is something that you do on your opponent's turn rather than during your own turn, so maybe you're going to play into a Talents or a Thrust. A lot of players also run Linger Rebo to link off Ibli, but you can't do that with Contact C. And then since you have to use Contact C after your opponent summons a monster, Dark Hole does become a neg for them with Contact C, as opposed to them just being able to use it to clear just Ibli. I'm not too sure which is better, right? That's probably a better question for Tom, I'm sure you could argue both ways. I'm just here to let you guys know that the Super Rare Contact C from the OTS Tournament Pack is now $5-6 to $6 per copy, quite a bit of a jump since the card had only been a dollar just a couple of weeks ago. Maybe if people go back to playing Donner for Hire, the Link 2, then this card will fall off, but who knows, just be aware and have your commons ready in case this card starts to see play again since prior to that super rare upgrade, the commons used to be worth a few dollars as well. Alright, Imperial Iron Wall is a card that I didn't even think to look at, but I guess I probably should have. This is a really simple floodgate that simply prevents cards from being banished altogether, which actually sounds really amazing when arguably the best deck of the format in Kash Tira basically just revolves around banishing things. The idea is that the deck basically flops if you are under Imperial Iron Wall, so it can be an effective floodgate, and unlike with Gozen Match, your opponent can't even use Fenrir to go and banish it interesting tech, though I don't know how good it would really be an application. If I were playing Kash Tira, I would play a ton of back row hate this format. You need to out things like Labyrinth and Trap Tricks, and you kind of lose to various floodgates like Iron Wall, Skill Drain, and Gozen Match, so I think that having those outs to back row is really important for Kash Tira. But then again, if everyone remembers that, then no one will play the floodgates, so Kash Tira will stop running back row hate, and then they'll be good again, and we'll just move on and on and on in a vicious cycle. Anyways, Ironwall has just two hollow printings. It was an ultra rare in the Joey Legendary Collection. Those are up to $9 each right now. And then it also got a super rare printing in an OTS tournament pack. Those are about five a piece. If you don't mind rarity though, do remember that the card just got a rare printing from Tactical Masters. So you should be able to grab your playset for under a dollar. This card is also good against Runic. So depending on your locals, this might be an interesting card for you to try running. Okay, so Zeus is a card that we've looked at several times before, and for good reason. I think that Zeus is definitely one of, like, the top five most broken Ixyz monsters ever printed in the entire game. All that it takes is for an Ixyz monster to battle this turn, and then all of a sudden you have access to a board wipe that sends everything else on the field to the graveyard, not even destroy, and it has a 3k body to boot. On top of that, depending on what you're running, you could possibly even do this more than once. Zeus is really important in Kash Tira since it's one of the main ways that you can break boards in the mirror match. Also, you usually have to run two copies, not just one, since if you only run one, your opponent could simply rip it out of your extra deck with either Unicorn or Diablosis. Because of this, Zeus is starting to trend upwards in price yet again. It was already trending upwards because it's such a good card, but now there's an actual meta reason for it to do so. The ultimate rares are up to $70 to $75, the secret rares are $40, and then even the ultra rares from the Megatons are up to $20 to $25 each. The question here is when the next reprint of this card is going to come. Now we do know that the card will get a quarter century secret rare printing coming in the next Battles of Legends set in June, 
but we're not yet sure of if the card will be just another card in the set that can get a reprint, like everything else. Remember, in Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge and Magnificent Mavens, the Starlight Rares and Pharaoh's Rares respectively weren't necessarily printed in the lower rarity part of the set itself. Now despite that, I do think that it will get another reprint that's more accessible. Zeus is just such an important card in the game right now, I think everyone should have access to it. That being said, I would keep just my own copies that I want to play in my deck and offload your extra secrets or ultras. The ultis are probably going to stay safe and retain a good chunk of value because they are a higher rarity and they do look really nice. And if you have Starlights, you probably don't mind a reprint of this card too much. The only other question is if this card will get banned eventually and how that would affect the price, but that's a question for another video. And finally, the last card that we're looking at for today is the Lord of the Heavenly Prison, with two back row decks actually being good this format, I think it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to see this card surging in popularity. Lord lets you reveal it in your hand, and then while it's revealed, it prevents your set cards from being destroyed until the end of your opponent's turn. On the other hand, if a set card is activated by either player, you can special summon this card to your side of the field, and if it was revealed when you special summoned it, you get to set any spell or trap from out of your deck, but then vanish it during the end phase of this turn. So basically, this card protects your back row from things like Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Twin Twisters, while also tutoring out any spell or trap straight out of the deck, including engine cards like Welcome Labyrinth, or just powerful disruption like Dharma Cannon and Eradicator Epidemic Virus, so this is definitely a tool that both Labyrinth and Trap Tricks will want to use. I believe that Ryan Yu even used a single copy in his main board, which got him very, very far at the YCS Las Vegas event. Now moving into the next couple of weeks, I think that Lord of the Heavenly Present is going to be a necessary card in those back row heavy decks, as people expect to see more and more of them at events. Because of this, Lord of the Heavenly Prison is starting to trend upwards in price. This card was actually really, really cheap. After its Megaton reprint, the originals from Burst of Destiny had fallen down to about $5 each, while the reprints were down at just $2. Now, however, the originals are back up to $10, and the reprints are up at $6, which is pretty good value for a card that not too many people paid attention to when they were opening up the tins. Now this card is still cheap enough that you don't need to panic sell it now. I think that with the Trap Tricks deck just coming out, there might be more people looking to pick up the card over the next few weeks, so you should have an opportunity to sell once the price and demand goes up a little bit more. I would just dig up whatever copies you have and keep an eye on this card moving forward to see if there's a better opportunity to offload them. Alright everyone, that is it for today's episode. A lot of really cool stuff happening with the format. I didn't even get to cover everything that I wanted to, so keep an eye out for the next Market Watch coming up this Thursday where we go over some more meta trends. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy today's Market Watch, please make sure that you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button as well. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.